You know, I was just like you when someone tried to sell this book to me as, well, it's just people walking four miles an hour the entire book. I don't want to read that. Yes, you do. Any game looks strange if everyone is being cheated at once. None of us really has anything to lose, and that makes it easier to give away. They walk through the rainy dark like gaunt ghosts, but he didn't look at them. They were the walking dead. The longer you went without speaking, the harder it gets to break the silence. Just go on dancing with me like this forever and I'll never tire. We'll scrape our shoe on the stars and hang upside down from the moon. He wondered how it would be to lie in the biggest, dustiest library silence of all, dreaming endless, thoughtless dreams behind your gummed down eyelids, dressed forever in your Sunday suit. No worries about money, success, or fear. No company but the silence like a moth's wing. An end to the agony of movement to the long nightmare of going down the road, the body in peace, stillness and order, the perfect darkness of death. If there is an after, I hope it's not dark, and I hope you can remember. I'd hate to wander around in the dark forever, not knowing who I was or what I was doing here, or not even knowing that I'd ever had anything different. The reason all of this is so horrible is because it's just trivial. We've sold ourselves and trade our souls on trivialities. He found himself still with too many questions and not enough answers. But that's the day's business. Thinking, thinking in isolation because it doesn't matter if you pass the time of day with someone or not. In the end, you're alone. He seemed to have put in as many miles in his brain as he had with his feet. The thoughts kept coming and there was no way to deny them. So he washed his feet, the only things that were keeping him from finding out if there was a kingdom of heaven or not. Hey, what's up, bookworms and constant readers? We are back again to talk a little Stephen King. And today, it's actually going to be Richard Bachman because today, guys, it is going to be The Long Walk from 1979. Now, that's when it was published. So this wasn't the first book that Stephen King published, but it was the first book that he ever wrote. He wrote it as a freshman in college and released it after he uh, obviously had some success in the business. Now, this one kind of gained a lot more notoriety in the 1980s once the secret was out that Stephen King was indeed Richard Bachman. But uh, I didn't read this, guys, until 2019. In case you guys are newer to the channel, you don't know the story. Around, I don't know, 2018 or so, I started saying I was going to do a great Stephen King reread. And I was going to read everything in publication order up to and including, obviously, everything I had never read before. So when I read The Long Walk in 2019, it completely blew me away. To one of those that was hard for me to find, actually, that's why I still have this old beat up uh, Bachman Books collection here, is, you know, before like digital books and stuff, guys, before I really embraced all that, it was hard to find some of these things. And The Long Walk was one that I was always like, oh, I don't have it, so I'm just going to, you know, whatever. It's not a big deal, you know, because I had read The Dark Half, I had read Thinner. I felt like I liked them, but, you know, not enough to be like, I've got to read everything that he wrote as Richard Bachman. So it's amazing that once I did read this, being a seasoned Stephen King veteran for 30 years, I all of a sudden was like, this is a top 10 Stephen King book for me, which is high praise for sure. And we're going to talk about why. But before we do, guys, we're going to get into what is this book about. Against the wishes of his mother, 16-year-old Ray Garrity is about to compete in the annual grueling match of stamina and wits known as The Long Walk. 100 boys must keep a steady pace of four miles per hour without ever stopping, with the winner being awarded the prize, anything he wants for the rest of his life. But as part of this national tournament that sweeps through the dystopian America year after year, there are some harsh rules that Garrity and 99 others must adhere to in order to beat out the rest. There is no finish line. The winner is the last man standing. Contestants cannot receive any outside aid whatsoever. Slow down under the speed limit and you're given a warning. Three warnings, and you are out of the game permanently, guys. That takes us back to 1979. I was a, a wee young lad of one year old when this did come out. This is The Long Walk. I feel like this is one that 
even if you haven't read it, I feel like if you are big into the King fandom, you've heard of it. You've heard of this book and people's constant praise for it. And I get a lot of people who haven't read it. Like, is it really that good? I mean, I'm here to tell you that, yes, it is. And that takes us to what makes it good or bad, beginning with the good. King already had this talent, obviously, as a teenager in college to write just the most amazing characters. Like his character work, it was not a secret at all. Right away, this guy knew what he was doing because the characters in this are just so memorable. And they're just... It's so hard because, you know, something that I always will bag on Stephen King on, and what's my biggest complaint about Stephen King is that he kind of spoils his own stories. Is He'll be like, he'll be talking about character and be like, and it was the last time anyone ever saw them alive. You know, and it's like, well, why did you just ruin that for me? And then he's able to still make you care. Well, with this, you go into this hearing, okay, well, there's a hundred kids here. The only way to win is to be the last person standing. Ah, don't get attached to anybody, right? Because, uh, you know, obviously only one of them is going to make it or, you know, supposedly. But doggone it, if you don't get attached to every single one of these characters in one way or the other, you know, even if they're a shitheel or if they're just the most, uh, you know, precious person alive, they must be protected at all costs. You will find yourself being very committed to these characters. And it's just, it's just amazing character work that he, he does. And this is, I mean, I always talk about Stephen King's character work and it feels like even though this was the first, I mean, this is some of the best. It is so damn good. I got to believe he based this on a lot of his real life friends or maybe some people that he was acquainted with. You know, I don't know about writing about them, uh, you know, all dying or whatever, maybe. <laughs> but, you know, this is Stephen King we're talking about here. So he might have just been that kind of weird friend. But, you know, just seeing these characters go through hell and achieve the impossible. It's it's impossible not to get attached to them, just seeing what they're going through. Because personally for me, I love characters that work hard and these characters work their asses off clearly. Again, people will be like, they're just walking. Let me know how long you can walk. And you don't know how far they go in this book. They really, really do. But uh, yeah, it's just, I, I love that they build alliances and friendships. But unlike a lot of other books in this little kind of subgenre, I guess you call it dystopian, like survival. I don't know what you really actually call it, but you know what I'm talking about. I always feel like they'll build like alliances and stuff, but everybody's just out to get each other. Everybody's just always like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use you for now and then knife you in the back later. I feel like these guys actually form a really good bond. And that makes it even more painful when you realize they're not all going to make it. But uh, yeah, they're not in each other's throats. And that's, I felt that kind, kind of refreshing. And considering when this was written, you know, it feels like a very believable dystopian future. You know, you think about this was written, he started writing this in the 60s. And this felt like something that could be very believable. You know, this kind of a, you know, totalitarian dictator state. And, you know, you got like, I don't know, I guess I would say that it's like, you don't feel like you're, you're doomed from the womb. Yes, there is a hard life. But it's not for everybody. The planet isn't screwed or anything like that. Because, you know, most things were just, you know, this is after the bombs drop. And this is the new dystopia. Uh, With this, it's like, it feels like it is a a cruel and punishing world. But it does feel like there there are ways to make it. I mean, obviously, that's what this contest is about. Is to kind of, you know, like I said, to win the prize. You know, which is basically, you never have to pay for anything. Or anything you want for the rest of your life. That is what you can obtain by winning this contest. Because that's the only reason you could think. Why would someone enter this contest? Because it's not that it's not like a lottery drawing or anything like that. It's just it's completely voluntary. But you know, there's only a hundred contestants. I'll let you get into the details of how you actually enter this yourself. But I again I like that it doesn't feel like, oh, this is just a screwed planet and everyone's screwed, you know, except like the dictator. There are, there is ways to go about making your way in this world. They're just you no, know, none of them are easy and some are easier than others. But, you know, are they easier? Hmm, well, you will see. But uh yeah, the dialogue's pretty snappy and believable. I do I do enjoy that a lot, especially considering the situation. But it, it's kind of... The book really relies on the dialogue a lot because, we'll be clear with you, very upfront here, there's not a huge plot in this. I mean, I've really kind of told you what the plot is. It really is just one more step, one more step, one more step, you know? So it really relies on the characters talking to each other and the dialogue is great. It's something that King has always done well is the way that young kids, especially young boys talk to each other and this they're under duress so you're not only dealing with what they're saying externally but you're dealing with what, what Garrity is hearing and is thinking to himself as he's doing this and it's it's deep stuff and like I said you can see right away this guy had a knack for how characters and mainly boys would talk to each other he was really really good with that and it does really kind of kind of make you help you understand the lives and the struggles of these characters not just Garrity you are in just in his head, but you know you get him talking with these other kids and seeing you know what their lives are like and things and seeing that it's not uh, 
there's a, there's a reason that everyone is doing this competition, some for more noble reasons than others, but it, it's something that, like I said, it'll be impossible to tug at your heartstrings. It'll be impossible for you not to get connected to all these characters. But I just love themes of hope, determination, and just taking one more step literally as well as figuratively just keeping going you know we'll worry about that later for now let me focus on keeping up this pace not getting a warning and uh yeah just uh it's it, to me it's just about determination and, and i love that i i really do so what didn't work what would you call it necessarily i don't say it's necessarily bad but you know others have complained some complaints that i have heard really because i think this is damn near especially when you consider that this is his first book, is damn near perfect. You know, Carrie's kind of known as his his first book, but he realized he wrote this before Carrie. This is a better book than Carrie, I think. And with the the things that people complain about this is, is King will still have some of those old Stephen moments. You got to remember, uh, he had those moments even back then. You got to remember this is a book where you are in a teenage boy's head and it's being written by a teenage boy. So you're going to have some of those moments where you're like, oh, okay, that's that's kind of cringe thoughts or dialogue. I can't believe I'm actually reading this right now. I feel like that happens at least once every Stephen King book. It's part of his charm to me at this point. But you will hear some things that'll make you be like, wow, did you really have to write that? Uh, Cruel and Punishing World. And I'm going to be honest with you here. King, even back then, he's he's not pulling any punches, especially when it relates to very violent acts on children. I mean, I feel like if you've read something like a Hunger Games or a Red Rising, I feel like you're, you you accept that. But you know, this being in like a real world kind of feel, I think not a fantastical world. I I think that helps make it even more visceral and real and scary. And it can be hard to read, like I said, because you do get attached to these characters, and bad things happen to a lot of them. And uh, it can be hard to read. And King, he does not pull punches. This is still a very adult book. And I want to make sure that people understand that right away because you are dealing with watching very young kids die in this world. And uh, again, I, I, the plot is just what people are like. It's really just, just a book about walking. And I feel like that's just selling it so short. But yes, if you're looking for something that has like this huge revelation or some crazy plot twist or something, you're not going to get it. That's not what this book is. This book is about in that moment of what they are doing. It's not as much about what's this overarching narrative. It really is just you are in Garrity's head with his thoughts. How do I get in this situation? How do I get out of it? How do I keep going? And the ending is very ambiguous. Again, stop me if you heard this one before. Stephen King book has a divisive ending. I love it. I think I know what it means. It's one of those things where it does kind of leave it up to you to decide what actually happened. Because um, after I finished this, I made my wife read it like immediately because I thought she would love it. And we still argue about the ending. She thinks it's one thing. I think it's something else. But uh, it, it is an ending that I think will probably leave you with a lot of thoughts. And, and to me, that's not a bad thing. But I just know how people are hypercritical on Stephen King's endings. But this one, I, I found it beautiful. I was reading it through blurry eyes, if you know what I mean. So why should you read The Long Walk? Well, it's a very human story with characters that work hard and defy the odds. For me, I love that. I can't get enough of characters that work hard and just are just determined, you know, and will just look, you know, a tough situation right in the eyes and say, you're not going to lick me. I love that. I love that about these characters. And it isn't just Garrity. I mean, all these characters, like I said, even the shithills are characters that are working their asses off, you know, and they're just... Their determination is just undeniable. I love it. But I think it's what the dystopian genre, uh, kind of like this, like I said, like the teen survival subgenre, this is what it was like before it became really big in pop culture. Now, I'm not saying that Stephen King created this. I'm not going to get into that argument about Battle Royale, about Hunger Games, about anything like that. I'm not going to get into those things. But I feel like this book and The Running Man are two very, very early big hits in this kind of subgenre here. They get a lot of undue, they don't, it doesn't get, it, it has a lot of undue credit that it's not receiving from those things that have gotten a lot bigger and a lot more attention. And uh, I feel like if you want to see what it was like before that became really commercialized, now I'm not over here being like, hey, check out this album before they got signed. That's not what I'm saying here. But if you want to see what this was like before it was packaged and slapped with a, you know, a for sale sign on it and seeing what it was like, not just for the masses. I think this would be a good place for you to start with it. But uh, yeah, it's just it's a great place to see King's beginning. You know how he really started in this this business that he's in now, and he is he has ruled over for you know fifty years, and you can see right away it was there. The talent was there. You know, it's a short read, guys. It's got a massive amount of heart, and it's uh, it's haunting. It's very haunting. Don't get me wrong. This isn't a feel good book. I'm not going to say that, but it's one that will leave a lasting memory for you. So for my final thoughts on this, look, 
just when I thought at that point where Stephen King couldn't make me cry anymore, I was like, okay, he got me real good with Lever 2263. I'm, I'm guarded now. I'm, I'm, he's not going to get me again. I'll be damned if I was not just tore up and a complete mess for the last 20 pages of this book. It really is so well done. And it's just one of those, it's like, it's just going to be a testament to his character work. I know I keep saying that, but really that's just the best thing for me this book. The feelings that you get because you just love these characters and how he makes them form a bond under duress here is just, it's just heartbreaking. And it's, it's, it's also heartwarming. So he's able to do both sides of that fence. And that's, that's impressive. But I feel like we're all put on this earth to do something, right? And the, the sad truth is, a lot of us, we never find it. We never find out what that is, our like hidden talent or our talent that's just below the surface that we either never have the courage to go after or we're just never lucky enough to stumble upon it or realize that there is an audience for that. It's really obvious reading this book that Stephen King found what he was supposed to be doing because to be able to do this, this story at 18 years old, as a freshman in college, which is already going to be one of the most challenging portions of your young life, you know, thrust into that new situation. That's that's incredible. It's incredible stuff. And it's amazing that a book about a hundred boys trying to maintain a speed of walking four miles per hour will leave scars on your heart. But good Lord does it. This is an amazing book. I don't care if you like Stephen King or not. This is a book that anyone can enjoy. I think everyone's going to either have a good time with it. They're going to have a lot of questions, but there's one thing that's for sure. You're always going to think about it because it is just that deep of a story. So I suggest you pick it up immediately. I know some of you are saying, what about multiverse connections? Well, that is what Into the Multiverse usually, I usually end that with guys, but here's the thing. Remember, this is written as Retro Bachman. This was, if there's any, if there's been any kind of uh, things that attach to the multiverse, it's been in retrospect. He wasn't really doing that with his Richard Bachman books at the time. There might be some stuff where he's found a way to reference it somehow. I believe, I don't remember what book, but I do pretty sure, I, because I remember the name Garrity, and I'm pretty sure he did have something where a character in the multiverse proper was actually reading a book by Ray Garrity. I think that's about the only thing that I can actually think. Maybe it takes place in Maine. Maybe that's about it. So I, I don't know. You might want to refer uh, to my superior officer here, Jaime Fuego, over on the horror show. He might be able to tell you if there's any connections with this one. But I don't believe that there are. But I know that one thing that there is a connection for me is right here because this book will always have a special place for me. And I felt completely stupid that I waited this long to read it, guys. And you should wait no longer. If you haven't read it yet, break your TBR and read it immediately because this is without a doubt one of my 10 favorite Stephen King stories. And that's an elite list. It really, really is. So, guys, The Long Walk or any of the other Bachman books, which one's your favorite? I'd love to know what you think. I'll be doing Thinner next before I finally get back into my into the multiverse schedule with Dreamcatcher because I have to I have to reread that. But I, you know, I reread Thinner uh, a while back because I, when I was doing my reread, I, I got this and I just read all the Bachman books together. So I kind of cheated in that regard, but I'll be doing thinner before I get back into my regular reread and get Stephen King back in my constant rotation so I can continue with Into the Multiverse on this channel. But I would love to know what you guys thought about the long walk. So make sure that you drop in the comments and uh, maybe, maybe walk a little faster than four miles per hour because... Uh, well, no, let's be honest. You get as many warnings as you want here. I would love to know what you guys think. So drop in the comments, and I will talk to you there.